Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, number 279, entitled, Why BioBalance Health? BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. For the last 14 years, Dr. Kathy Maupin, who is a board-certified gynecologist and has 30 years of practice in as a gynecologist, doing deliveries and surgeries and treating women exclusively, Mm -hmm. uh, has been refocusing her practice on hormone replacement therapy and anti-aging medicine. And for most of those 14 years, she was the go-to person in the St. Louis metropolitan area. You were the one that was doing the work. You were the one that knew what to do. And you were the one that was getting results that other people weren't getting. Now, in the last two or three years, there have begun to be, as a result of more knowledge and acceptance of the idea of hormone replacement, and in particular, testosterone replacement, there have begun to be competitors, uh, locally and nationally, who are marketing themselves for mass volume practice. You know, uh, I don't want to name the competitors, but... But you see ads for it on television. You read articles about men in particular Mm -hmm. seeking this out uh, as a treatment to to hold back their loss of virility, their loss of masculinity, their aging Mm -hmm. deficits. And so the question comes to mind, why you? Why, why, if I'm looking for this service and I read an article somewhere, I see something on TV, or somebody just says to me, you know, they can do something about that, you know, uh, why would I consider coming to you? First, first of all, I was the first person right. in St. Louis and Kansas. Well, not Kansas City, but my mentor was there. Mm-hmm. But I was the first person in St. Louis who was trained and treated both men and women with bioidentical testosterone pellets. Okay, and, and, and you had your own discovery journey with that. I mean, your own health issues mm-hmm. caused you to need that. And mm-hmm. you went lots of places looking for exactly that answer and, mm-hmm. and were turned away. You were right. I couldn't find anyone in the Midwest. That knew anything about it. That they, that they knew what was wrong with me. So right. I had this group of symptoms, new migraines, weight gain, lack of sex drive, um, lack of muscle mass, Loss of mental energy. Acuity. I couldn't think. Uh, stamina was gone. I couldn't migraines. get through a whole day. My migraines were incapacitating. And it was all right after I had my ovaries removed. But I went to many different specialties and many different doctors that I thought were very, very well versed in hormonal replacement. And I wasn't sure if there was something else wrong. But you, you they went to all, a lot of doctors and they basically said, well, you're crazy. You need to see a psychiatrist. Well, so then you went to a lot of psychiatrists, and they said I went to one you may psychiatrist, be crazy, and he but said not for the reasons no, you think. He said I'm not crazy. <laughs> he said you're not crazy. He said you're not crazy. So just tell him you're not crazy. They need to start thinking because he didn't know what was wrong with me. Right. So I went to several other doctors, and they said that I was lazy, that I was just fat, and didn't do what I was supposed to with my diet. They told me that um, I had no motivation, that I was getting old, and I should just. Accept it, but I was 47. They and, gave me the Catholic answer. It's a mystery. Yeah. Well, basically, they didn't want to say I don't know. Yeah. So they just said it was my fault. And I hear that from lots of people who come who, to see you now. Who come to see me now. And that your doctors are still saying that. They are. They are still saying that. Yeah. Yet, when this happened to me, I'm always looking for a way to share information. Right. Okay. So when this happened to me, I have to back up a little bit. Mm -hmm. I've been using bioidentical hormones in other forms, in gels and creams and vaginal tabs. And I mean, I've been treating PMS with bioidentical progesterone. I had been treating menopause with with bioidentical vag tabs. I've been treating, I've been using all of these methods, compounded uh, hormones from a compounding pharmacy made just for my patients all the way through my, my gynecologic career. But to treat specific presenting symptomology. Right. Not to, to look at a more global approach to health. Well, I didn't even know that women should have a certain level of testosterone. I just knew that 
when someone came in um, who was 80 and couldn't take estrogen, that uh, testosterone in Vaseline mm -hmm. that I had made up at the pharmacy and put on their, they could put it on their bottom every night and their bottom would be better. What and they call stopped, old lady bottom. Right, old lady bottom. And their right. bottom, would, the skin would get thicker and they wouldn't have bed sores and they wouldn't have trouble urinating. And, and so I knew that the action of testosterone in women on mm -hmm. skin and bladder and vagina but I didn't understand that it has to be throughout our bodies. All of us need it. Mm. So that was news to me and obviously everybody else in St. Louis. Right. So uh, when I actually found Dr. Tutera, who is from California, mm -hmm. he treated me and I was with bioidentical pellets under the skin, bioidentical hormones that last a long time. You don't have to worry about taking it, but every. Four months. So with the pellets, you get an on-demand reservoir that's in your right. system. Mm -hmm. And as you move, as you're active, you metabolize it according to the rate your body needs it. That's it. It's absolutely a, like, perfect description. And so, so I had tried testosterone creams and gels, but testosterone, when you put it on your skin, turns into more estrogen. Mm -hmm. Well, estrogen wasn't the problem. I could get estrogen in a different way that was non oral, like a patch. But... When I used testosterone, trying to get testosterone into my system prior to using pellets, I, it all, all it turned out was like I, I grew a huge chest, I grew belly fat, I got swollen, I felt terrible. And I'm like, this isn't what testosterone does. I don't know why this is happening. All, so all the I couldn't with the first figure pass it. Effect. Right. I, well, that would be oral, but it was going, the first pass through the skin right. makes estrogen out of testosterone. Okay. At least 20%. Right. Same with men. Men who take mm -hmm. androgel are making a lot of estrogen when it goes through their skin. Okay. That's one of the problems with that. So I had tried all that. Right. I had used that on all my patients. And for me, it didn't work. So that's when I was desperate. Mm -hmm. And I, was, and I um, had to hit my knees and pray to God that I would find someone to help me. Mm -hmm. And that was Gino Tatera. Within three days, I got an answer. It's kind of like better than email. And... Mm -hmm. <laughs> And he, I mean, he saved me. It was an answer, and it did work. And so then you became a crusader. Going back to your reference about, I'm always trying to spread the word. Mm -hmm. you, you've written a book called The Secret Female Hormone. With you. For women. Yes, with me. Uh, that gives all of this information and tells this story. Mm -hmm. And you've been sending that out to physicians. You've been giving talks at uh, professional conferences. There are other like-minded physicians mm -hmm. who are beginning to get the word mm -hmm. and say, this is a treatment alternative. But we come back to today's question, if I'm in St. Louis, or if I can get to St. Louis, why you? Okay, so the other, the other personality um, characteristic I have is that no matter what I do, mm -hmm. I'm going to be the best. So I driven. mean, I'm going to be driven to find the best way to do something. I have this, it's kind of a knack where I watch something happen in an office and I, and I know how to do it better. Right. Or I think about how to do it better and then I come up with an answer. Or, and same thing with diagnosis. So first I, I learned this from Gino and then I realized, well, this isn't working without replacing other hormones that are, right. are, are not normal. It's not a panacea, normal. not it's in It's not and of the itself. only thing you have to think about. So right. to both make it most effective, to make you feel like you are 35 again, which is how I feel. Actually, I probably feel better than 35 because I was on call all the time then. But it, I, I figured out what to do to troubleshoot all the things that can possibly happen. And I have thousands and thousands of patients from all over the world that I have treated and fixed problems that they've gone to six or seven doctors for. Right. And then they come to me because of my experience and because of my drive to make sure I figure it out. It's a mystery to me. I figure it out. So one of the advantages of coming to see you at BioBalance Health is your focus on uh, hormone analysis and treatment complications. You're not a mass volume or a high volume no. office. You're not a one size fits all treatment. We're a very center. individual dosage, individual troubleshooting. Everybody's metabolism, when it comes to hormones, is gen is genetically and environmentally mon uh, uh, not managed, but um, changed. 
So, so and it's individual. It, it's in every individual case, it's a chemistry set equation. You've got to play with this mm -hmm. and that. There, even though there are sort sort of anticipatory ranges. Generally, men have this amount. Generally, women have this mm -hmm. amount. You start there, but then you look at that individual person and all their different scores on on blood tests and exams mm -hmm. and, and and their symptoms. data and their symptoms and play with the combination through a compounding pharmacy mm -hmm. that creates a product specifically for that individual mm -hmm. that balances what they need. And say three people had the same dose. Right. So, but one of them converts it into estrogen. Right. So then I have to use a medication in their pellet that stops that conversion. And you take so the that, time to do that, to know that. We all, we all do. My nurse practitioners have been trained by me and have been with me through this whole journey, they and my daughter, uh, Rachel Sullivan, is also uh, in Kansas City taking care of patients. She's been with me for my whole life, obviously. And so she's very well versed in looking at the individual and saying, oh, well, they're not going to feel better unless we stop the conversion, right. unless we give them this supplement to suppress their cortisol, because high cortisol binds up testosterone. If they, We look at every hormone. Then we look at what are the side effects, and then we troubleshoot those. So mo many men will get high red counts, right. red blood count counts. That's not a reason not to take testosterone because it has so many other benefits. You just have to give blood two or three times a year. You just have to, you know, like the old-fashioned kings have to be bled. Right. You know, but that some women have that as well. But we figured out over time, we didn't know all this in the very beginning because we've learned as we've gone – but through research, through reading journals from every specialty. Not just the gynecological or the there's nothing in There's hardly anything in gynecology's right. um, journals. But Maturitis, which is a GYN journal, but it is, it is from England. It's ah. Elsevier. Mm. And uh, that journal has a lot about pellets and bioidentical hormones and new research. But I also look at psych psychiatric journals. I, I look at rheumatology journals. Endocrine, Endocrine journals is my primary where they have lots of things about uh, patients and testosterone. So I've structured my practice so that I have time to read all of this right. and then take that information and apply it to how we treat patients. Well, and your nurses do that similarly. They, they read these things. They each sort of have their own special area of interest mm -hmm. or focus that they say current on, and then they teach the rest of the staff, or the staff right. will go to them. I have somebody that has a breast cancer history. Mm -hmm. What do we know about this? What am I going to tell this person? What are they going to need? What should we be concerned about? And mm -hmm. you've got somebody that's on top of all that. I have somebody else who does nutrition, who is kind of a star in nutrition. I have somebody else who is uh, not an OBGYN nurse practitioner, but an ICU nurse right. practitioner. So she is uh, on top of all of the major illnesses, heart and lung and heart failure and things like that. So she gets that part. There's, so you, so you we put it together. So professional trained staff that's been with you this full journey. Mm -hmm. Almost uh, all of them have been. And you have your own dedication to the scientific exploration and to individualized treatment. And I'm unwilling to say I don't know unless I've gone through everything that I know how to research and find an answer. I mean, people call up and say they're from all over the country, from Boston. And from other countries. And I mean, from other people countries. people come in from around the world. Which is amazing, two or three times a year to come in for their pellets and to have their hormones mm -hmm. of all types re rebalanced. I was fortunate enough to attend a national convention of anti-aging medical doctors at which you gave a presentation. Mm -hmm. And in your presentation, you talked about one of the, the most uh, frustrating criticisms or critiques that you receive from other doctors. Uh, and that is that there is such a misunderstanding or a disagreement about the amount of testosterone that people should have in their blood mm -hmm. count. So that when you do a blood exam, like if, if I get testosterone pellets from you mm -hmm. and then I go to see my regular physician mm -hmm. and she doesn't know and she looks at my, my testosterone count, she's going to go, oh my God, you're way over the norm. Well, you're Why over the this? norm for your age. But you're within the range of young, healthy. Right. So the, the difference is I look at the, and the dosage makes all the difference. I mean, if you put 200 milligram pellets in a man, he's going to feel worse, not better. But you, if you put 12 in, he'll feel better. So 
So that's the dose, how well, we figure so, so dosage. So what I was going to say is I saw you at the end of your presentation get attacked by another nationally known physician who was a presenter at the same convention. Yeah, she was Who just... disagreed with you about dosage decisions. And you say that's a fairly common thing, that people don't know what you know about dosage decisions. And you right. have the data and the experience to back it up and say, this, you know, what what your She was completely unreasonable is, I treat symptoms. in many ways. I don't treat data I treat sheets. symptoms and, and blood tests. Yeah. And oftentimes symptoms and blood levels in men correlate, uh -huh. okay? But I knew much more about women because I'm a gynecologist. Right, right. She's an endocrinologist. We study and know women and their hormones much better than endocrinologists. Right. So with women, you don't just go for giving them um, as much testosterone as they would have if they were 60. Yes. You go for giving them as much testosterone and a blood level of somebody who's in their 30s. Because that's when we were healthier. And I always compare it to, and I did in this lecture, how we judge osteoporosis. We don't compare bones to somebody who is our age. We compare them to a 29-year-old female or 29-year-old male. So we have to compare our hormones that drop with age to hormones that are actually of a, of a young, healthy adult, not teenager, but adult. Then we have to look at the free testosterone. For women, it's huge. Women make very little free active testosterone compared to the total that they need. And it is, the problem is the doctors look at the total and go, oh my God, that's a, that's a men's level. Well, but the free is a woman's level. And the free is what's necessary to judge whether somebody's absorbing their pellets or using them. But then, if their symptoms aren't gone, I'm going to still give them more. Because what's the worst thing that can happen? Facial hair? We can deal with that. As a side effect. As a side oh, effect. Right. That's the worst thing that can happen. <clears throat> and the other thing, then, is that the free is just swept up like garbage by the bloodstream and washed out if it's not used by the receptor sites that it's sent to. Sent to, right. With. Right. So even if you have too much... Then you get rid of the out. you get yeah. rid of the extra. Right. So uh, and as we get older, we have there is a level of receptor site um, resistance. Whereas when we're younger, we could use a, we can have a certain dose, and all the receptor sites actively pick up these are sites on all your cells pick up the testosterone and use it. As we get older, we don't know the key to this yet. I'm assuming we will in some future at some future date but the testosterone can bounce off the receptor sites and not attach so the idea is to flood them until the symptoms go away right and one of the biggest symptoms i look for is sex drive so and sexual sexual um energy libido, libido. just the vibrancy of that mm -hmm. there also is something that that most people won't know i mean looking on the website they won't know it if they don't know you and they don't know the history of your practice when you first began to practice as the only person doing this in the St. Louis area, other doctors were skeptical and critical. They were. Some of them they were aggressively abusive. so. Abusive. <laughs> Not all of them, but many. And some of them still are. Mm -hmm. But more and more of them from multiple specialties are beginning to call you to ask about issues that are unique to mm -hmm. your practice or they're beginning to refer people to you when they hit a wall, when they say, you know mm -hmm. what, I, I can't solve your migraine problem. I, I've done everything I right. know to do, so it's not what I know. Let me send you to her because sometimes she gets results I don't get. Mm -hmm. And so then that person comes to you. So one reason to consider coming to you in the first place, now that you're watching this and, and might know, is that Kathy is the go-to doctor for other doctors. <laughs> when they reach the limit of what they know or are willing to experiment with, uh, because it's not their focus of treatment or they have a different kind of practice or whatever it might be, they send you to Kathy. Or they will call Kathy and say, all right, I got this person. We had, we had somebody call the office from Colorado a month ago who was looking for a go-to referral source they could call whenever they ran into something they didn't know. And they wanted to work mm -hmm. out some kind of an agreement with Dr. Maupin to say, mm -hmm. if I'm lost, can I call you? And that's, that's happening. Well, which is a little scary because that means they're putting pellets in people and they don't really know what they're doing. 
And there's a lot of that too. So people just go, oh, I'm going to put a couple of pellets in you. One of my patients came from a well-respected OBGYN and said, I've been his guinea pig. He sees me back like every other month, draws right. blood and goes, let's try this. Let's try that. I mean, yes, there's a little bit of, mm -hmm. of adjustment based on um, inner, you know, inner feeling about what's going on with somebody. But she, she felt like she was getting whiplash. She was getting way too much and then not enough. And then, and, and, and it was, it and not was. not let anything run its course. Just sort of like try this this month. We'll try something next month. Right. And, and that person no longer does pellets. I mean, yeah. thankfully. Yeah. But, but I mean, anybody can, the easiest part of pellets is putting testosterone is putting them in. Right. So putting them in, anybody can put them in, but if you don't know what to do and you've got a problem, if you don't know what to do with certain other medications, if you don't know how if you to... you don't know about the importance of the dosage. Right. That, that you, you're treating, and again, what you teach over and over again is we treat the symptoms. And, and mm -hmm. if your symptoms aren't getting better, then we still need to do something. Let's figure right. out what it is. Right. I mean, I have, some, I have a few people who, because of their unusual genetics, like they make too much of the binding protein that, that inactivates their testosterone, right. which is a big problem, but not a common problem. We figured out how to manage that, and they have to actually come in from out of town every two months. That's the only way we can manage it. Not because we're churning, trying to get somebody right. in all the time. More money in the front That's door. not our goal, but that's the only way this particular patient can feel better, and she does. Yeah. So we have been working with her every two months, getting her to the point where she finally is back to her old self. Because before she was just going to quit life, she was just going to crawl into a into a chair and sit there the rest of her life, and she's she was fifty. So ultimately, if if you read our book, The Secret Female Hormone, if you go to the website and read some of our blogs or watch some of our health casts, and you begin to think, you, you find out what the symptoms of what Dr. Maupin has labeled testosterone deficiency syndrome are, and that you have some of those, or you just have a concern, and you say you don't want to have this checked out. Uh, I would encourage you to consider coming to St. Louis. St. Louis is centrally located in the United States. There are ways to get here from anywhere. We do have people that come from foreign countries. We have people that come from all over the United States. But the practice is primarily focused in Missouri, in St. Louis and Kansas City. And we're near the airport in St. Louis. And in Kansas City. It's not too far either. Not too far. Mm -hmm. uh, consider it because experience, training, staff, dedication to problem solving, knowledge, research capacity, all of that is available on the web. You can see what she's done. You can see what she has. She's had a success rate in excess of 90%. Happy, 95%. Satisfied, 95% satisfied customers for over 14 years dealing with complex problems. And her referral base among physicians is growing. So I take care of a lot of physicians too. into this, <laughs> check it out. Mm -hmm. Thank you for listening. Thanks. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the BioBalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit BioBalanceHealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at Facebook.com slash BioBalanceHealth. Find Brett Newcomb at BrettNewcomb.com.